Tucked away amid the temples and mosques, the colonial buildings and century-old shop houses, elderly Penangites work away in small craft shops, some of which they've been in for decades. There are people making furniture from rattan and painting traditional Chinese lanterns. There are sign makers, jewelers and joystick makers. This 86-year-old man used to make the giant joysticks till age caught up with him. He now works in more manageable sizes. He explained to a customer how he learned his craft. In many UNESCO World Heritage Zones, residents and traditional craftspeople have given way to boutique hotels, cafes and gift shops catering to tourists. Heritage advocates are trying to make sure a similar fate doesn't happen to Penang. Then suddenly they realise that, oh, their favourite coffee shop is gone. You know, the artisan that they've been going to, you know, for how many years to, to get their things done, they're no longer there. We are very concerned that if they're being pushed out by very high rents or, you know, property speculation, then obviously it is not going to be living heritage. To try to keep the traditional crafts alive, the Heritage Trust is funding an apprenticeship program. May Lim has found plenty of interest among younger Penangites keen to learn her specialty, traditional beadwork. Well, it's a dying skill, it's a dying skill. If, I, if it doesn't go on and some, pass it on to somebody or the younger set, I mean, younger generation, this will go extinct. But even those willing to pass on their skills through the apprenticeship program don't necessarily find it easy. The joystick maker found his children weren't interested in learning his craft. And despite the efforts of groups like the Heritage Trust, there's a real danger that the combined forces of tourism development and old age will see many of these skills die out in the next few years a loss to the unique character of this historic city. Ryan Meltzer, CCTV, Georgetown, Penang, Malaysia.